how to use z-spheres and z-sphere mannequins zebras for ipad quick tip let's go so we want to go ahead and start a new project but we don't necessarily want to block out our mesh from scratch so what we can do instead is use z-spheres or z-sphere mannequins in order to do this on the home screen pick new sculpt come up to the very top and hit z-spheres and here you're going to have a laundry list of different mannequins that you can use quickly pick the one that you would like so i'm going to pick this one and immediately our project will load and you can see here that we have a whole character ready for us so to use these mannequins are pretty simple. Up here at the top, we have the ability to have a move, a scale, and a rotate. We also have a draw pointer, but we'll get to that in a second. So to use rotate, all we need to do is click any one of our mesh, and you see these white cones that are right here? We can go ahead and pick this, start moving this back and forth. We do have symmetry turned on, so we could turn off symmetry and kind of rotate him to the side. What's also cool is that the cones that are attached will actually follow each other. So here I could pick this white cone, start moving this up, and the whole arm moves. This also works for scale. I can give him a little tiny arm or a really big arm. And this also works for move. So you can see here we do have a lot of different options that allows us to pose our character. Now, if you'd like to build your own Z-Sphere rig, one of the things we can do is actually back out. Come in here and click Z-Sphere. With Z-Sphere now, we're going to zoom out and that top menu where we had the draw pointer. What's really cool about this is that we can easily draw out a shape and then we could click move and position this wherever we would like to do this. This does also work symmetrically, so we could turn symmetry on, go to our draw pointer, and we can draw out two points at the same time. Go back to move and draw this out. A really cool tip is to get the same size Z-sphere when we're drawing it out. So as I draw this out, if I press and hold shift, it's gonna go ahead and snap to the same size as the Z-sphere you're drawing on. If you have two Z-spheres that are connecting and you would like to add an additional Z-sphere, all we need to do is go ahead and with the draw pointer, click somewhere in the middle, and that will go ahead and add another connecting Z-sphere. Once you're satisfied with your base mesh, we're gonna go ahead and turn it into actual geometry. So to do that, open up the tool menu, go down to adaptive skin, and go ahead and say preview. From here, what this is gonna do is give you an example of what it's gonna look like when it's dynameshed. To adjust this, Go back to your Z-Sphere Adaptive Skin, come down to Density and turn that down to zero, and Dynamesh Resolution, turn that down to zero as well. Turn the preview off and on again, and you can see we're actually getting some nice clean quads instead of Dynamesh. If you're like me and you like to use Dynamesh, open up the tool menu, go back to the Dynamesh Resolution, type in something like 64, turn the preview back off and on again. This will give you something that's pretty low res and easy to work with. And then all we need to do is go to Make Adaptive Skin. Once your skin mesh is generated, you might notice that nothing happens. That's okay. All we need to do is actually go to the plus icon, come down here to the bottom, and you'll see our new Dynamesh skin. That's going to go ahead and cover for this video, and we'll catch you in the next.